Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to project an image with lights inside of Cinema 4D and Octane Render. Now this is something that is pretty straightforward, but if you don't know exactly how to do it, it can be a little tricky and frustrating. So that's why I'm making this tutorial to help out anybody who might be struggling with that. The first thing we need to do is first create a floor and then something for our light to project our image on. So let's just head up here, let's create a plane, press T, let's scale it up a little bit, go back up here, make another plane, press R, rotate this, hold down shift, constrain that to 90 degrees, E again, hold down shift, pull this up 200 centimeters, and let's just pull it back like say 500 centimeters. Now we have a nice little plane for us to project on, and now what we need to do is let us start up Octane and start making some lights. So to begin, let's just head up to our Octane tab up here and do Octane Live Viewer. And for me personally, what I love to do is I love to grab this little thing right here and pull it over just till this line goes from here to here. So see how it goes like that? We release and now we have it docked and we've split our viewport in half, half is Octane and half is Cinema 4D, so pretty handy. I dislike these red lines, so I'm just going to go to my render settings and change this to a one by one square filmic ratio, just so we can lose those. When we start up Octane, it'll get rid of them right there. First thing we need to do though, is go to Objects and then Octane Area Light. Now that we have that, let's just simply lift it up a little bit, maybe say 200 centimeters off the ground. And now let us start up our Octane Renderer click this little button and we can see we are shining a light but now let's get down to how to actually project an image now what you've probably done is you select your octane area light tag right here and then you've gone to distribution and you've clicked these three dots and you selected an image now I'm currently doing a daily render series where I make a new render in cinema 40 every day so I have a lot of images to choose from if you're interested in checking that out please head over to my Instagram I am epic J creations feel free to follow me if you'd like to see more of my work but for the sake of this tutorial here we're going to be using this nice daily render I did of this rhino statue I'm just gonna double click this image and I'm not going to save that path location feel free to use whatever image you may like but you'll notice it is not looking right and it just this is just horrible and you've probably been very frustrated because of this here is what you need to do let's pretend we never did that let's clear this out what you need to do is go to distribution right here select the arrow go to octane and then generate an image texture octane likes having all its images in an image texture no matter where you're placing it instead of octane even if it's a light so let's just open up into this image texture. We're gonna go one level and now we're gonna take file, click these three dots and now choose our image. And we're not gonna choose a file path. Still though, we're gonna have this problem, but here is why we did an image texture. First things first, let's go to our projection. We can actually change that. Let's select projection and let's twirl down this arrow. Now let's change our texture projection from mesh UV to perspective so let's select perspective and now it still looks really weird but if we scroll down we are getting a little bit of a visual bug but let's just click lock aspect um, let's click lock aspect ratio I can talk aspect ratio let's check it on and then check it off just to clear that visual bug and let's change our transform value to a 2d transformation it will not let you scale the image unless you're using a 2d transformation for some reason that's just how it is let us lock this now and begin scaling it down. Now we can start to make something out, but it's still extremely blurry. This is because Octane is exactly, almost exactly I should say, true to world and extremely realistic as you probably have noticed. This means if we have a very large light source, we have a very diffuse and blurry image. Now, if we select our light, press T and begin to scale it down, we're going to have a sharper and sharper, more detailed image. Now, notice our light is getting darker while we're shrinking it. If we select our tag here, we have these three check boxes, normalize, surface brightness, and of course, cast illumination. We definitely want that one on. First up, normalize means it's going to normalize the brightness of the light, no matter how big it is, because in real life, if you have a very large light source, it's going to generate more light because there's more surface area emitting light. 
Octane kind of counters this and makes it easier for the artist by just making sure it'll increase and decrease the brightness along with scaling and shrinking. The problem is the reason it's getting darker when we're shrinking is because we have surface brightness on. This means it's limiting its brightness to the surface area. We're going to uncheck that and now it'll stay just as bright no matter how big we make it. Very handy. Let's keep shrinking it. Now focus your eyes right here. Let's see what we're getting here. Let's keep shrinking this. Make it a little smaller, smaller. See how we're getting so much more details and now we're tack sharp. Look at that. So handy. Now the next thing you're going to notice is we have a lot of them and they are upside down. <laughs> so to fix that, let's select our Octane light tag here, go into our image texture, and now, this is very important, change our border mode from wrap around to black color. This will simply limit any other versions of our object from being copied and generate only one. What's really cool is if you have a black background in your image, it'll render that out basically as transparency because in Octane, in most 3D applications, pure black is no color, no light. So if you have a black background, it's automatically going to crop that out for you. Pretty handy. Now let's solve the problem of our upside down image. The way we're going to fix this is simply going all the way down to the bottom to our lock aspect ratio and begin pulling this up or down until we have it about the right size. I think about here. Next we can move to our transform types here and we can choose X, Y, and Z. And I believe it's Z that we want to rotate on. Yes it is. And we are going to rotate 180 degrees. There we go. Now we have our Rhino nice and rotated and sitting up correct. There's one last thing though. You may have noticed that for my Rhino Daily, I'm going to open it up here, it's actually supposed to face to the left. It's not to the right. It's actually been mirrored. So here's how we actually fix that. Let's take our scale and round that out to say 0.3 in size. And now let's unlock our aspect ratio. Let's type in 0.3 for all the other versions so it's not being stretched. 0.3 by 0.3. Now let's take the top one, our X, and do minus and then press enter. We've now reversed that and now we are facing the correct direction. One last thing I would like to point out, we have basically finished, but if we change our render mode from direct lighting to path tracing, we're going to get more realistic global illumination and we can actually see the light being bounced off of this plane onto the ground. Extremely realistic. It's actually very impressive. It's um quite beautiful actually. It's amazing what Octane can do. Now you may be pointing out, yes, we could go to direct lighting mode open up our render settings and we could change this off a of GI ambient inclusion to GI diffuse which gives us a very similar effect but I am just very very um, biased towards path tracing just because I love that it, it's just so much more realistic I just really enjoy path tracing and uh, it doesn't have too much of a render hit but we're getting off topic now that we've done this you can resize this of course by locking your aspect ratio and scaling it. Now I do want to point out if we lock it now that it's been reversed it's going to revert it back to that issue. So if we're going to scale you want to do that ahead of time before you end up flipping it back. Another thing I would like to point out is now that we have this basic setup here we can simply press E and move our light closer to make it smaller or pull back to make it bigger. So we can actually resize it now with the position of the light. And this is a true projection. This is not some texture fake that we have going on here. This means if I create a cube and pull it back and shrink it down, you already see it happening there. We'll shrink it down a little bit and pull it up. See how it's catching the light? It's actually realistically catching the light and being projected onto. So where the cube is, it is getting light and it's not allowing light to hit the screen right here. And where the cube is not blocking, we can see. This is better demonstrated, I think, with a sphere, probably. Yeah, let's make a sphere. Scale that down and press E and let's bring it back. Here we go. Much, much easier to kind of see what's going on. Very, very cool. And we can pull it back and you can do cool things. Or you maybe pull it out. All kinds of cool tricks you can do here. Now let's take this a step further. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but if you really want to see what's going on, we can create some visual visual representation, I guess you could call it, for seeing some volumetric lighting going on here. Now, if you want to see that, you definitely want to be in path tracing. I'm going to set up a very simple rig, and um, anybody who's not done some 
subsurface scattering with the octane environment, you're going to definitely want to pay attention because I just figured this out today, how to actually make the dang thing work. So let's go to objects. Um, let's just do a texture environment and we'll set the texture color to black. So we're not having any effect here. Now what we're going to do is go up one level and we're going to go to medium and we're going to take our medium and we're going to click add fog. Instantly everything goes black. That's because it is just way too dense. So here's what we have to do to actually make this fog medium in your environment actually work and do something. Because until today, I've never actually gotten this to work. So here's what we have to do. We're going to go down into our scattering one level. First up, we have to click our absorption, C4D octane, and go to RGB spectrum. It is in here somewhere, always hidden. Here we go, RGB spectrum, and we're doing this so we can specifically set it to 100% white so we're not going to have any type of absorption happening whatsoever. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and work on our volume step. I like this at 0.5, and our density, this is very important, we're going to set our density to 0 0.001, and press enter. Now, of course, we can see stuff, which is really nice, but we're not quite finished. We are getting a little bit of volumetric lighting, but don't worry, we're going to fix this heavily. Now, scattering. Do not use the default RGB spectrum. Instead, select this arrow here, C4D Octane, and let us use a... They have it in here somewhere. Where is it? Float texture. Here we go. Float texture. Now, select our float texture and set it to a value of 1. Actually, I think five. Yes, yeah, set it to a value of five. Now I remember. Now we're doing much better, and we're almost there. Let's go back up two more levels and set the thickness to 100. And this is the perfect setup to get really nice volumetric lighting going on without completely fogging up your whole screen. So this is much easier than creating a cube, setting your camera behind it, make sure your lights are in. It's just, um, it's just so much easier. Now, I'd like to point out what's actually happening. I read this in the manual. Basically imagine, I'm going to make a camera right here. Basically imagine we have a little tiny sphere surrounding our camera and we can't see it and its normals are reversed so it's facing the inside and this whole earth, this whole map that we filled up in Cinema 4D has now become a giant cube or sphere that has been holding our volume and it's only working because our camera can't be in the volume. It won't work. That's why there's a tiny little sphere surrounding our camera that's cutting a hole in the middle of that that allows us to see through that. I hope that kind of makes sense. But basically, we're in a giant volume full of fog. And just imagine the camera has a little kind of glass ball around it that keeps it from getting fogged up so we can actually see what's going on. But now we can just hop into our camera and we can take a look right here. I'll grab my little render thing here. And now we can speed this up, my little uh, picture viewer uh, render region. That's what it's called. And you can see this will take some time to render, but if we crop that out, we can actually see live the light being projected onto our wall right here. This is really crazy, to be quite honest. This is impressive that it can do that. Uh, th I'm getting off topic, but you see these little specks here? Uh, a great way to clean those up in render settings is to take your GI clamp and bring it down to something like 0 0.3, and instantly those are gone, and we don't lose much render quality. Now, you will lose a little bit if you're doing caustics, but uh, in this case, we don't have any, so that cleans it up really, really nicely. So we basically come to the end of the tutorial. Now to kind of finish everything up and use this in a little bit more of a real world perspective, because you're probably wondering, this is really cool, but what am I actually going to use this for? Because I know that's what I was figuring out when I, that's what I was thinking of when I figured this out. I was like, what am I going to actually do with this? And here's just some uh, inspiration. Here's what I did for my daily 314. I created, and it's a look, there it goes. I created a environment where I basically have this walls back here, a floor and some cloth that I draped here with a cool little camera that I'm pretending is a projector and it's going to be shining this light. So let's just hit render and take a look at how this turns out and a few more seconds. There we go. Loaded in. It's way too big. Lock that ratio and there you go. You guys can kind of see here's some artistic idea what you could do with this. You could, uh, take this and render how to project an image with light in Octane. This is actually the front picture for this tutorial. Um, you guys learned, just showed you how to make that kind of visual light there, and um, all this other stuff is just me playing around. And if you'd like to see the finished image in its full glory, here you go. And I shall hide the stream footer for you. So there you go. You get a full screenshot of here it is. Very nice. It's 
I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Did get a little bit of noise on this one here, but the tutorial at this point is done. I really hope you guys found it helpful. And uh, if you like this type of tutorial type, please leave a thumbs up. If you felt like I just wandered around a little bit too much and didn't get directly into the information you're going on and gave you more information that you're actually looking for, go ahead, leave a thumbs down. If you don't want to, leave a thumbs up. And uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any more questions or have any problems pulling this technique off or following this technique or if you have any ideas on how to do it better or how to reduce the noise here but um thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you guys in the next tutorial